here in person. Welcome, Nicolas. Thank you, Andrea. Good afternoon. Good morning. Well, those in uh, Latin America and the Caribbean. This will be a lightning talk. And so I have 10 minutes. Without further ado, then let me start with the presentation. So now uh, I'm going to present uh, the state of the art uh, of and the security of IoT. So you may know that the Internet of Things has been uh, developing uh, very quickly in the Internet. So we are going to focus on security. We are going of the Internet of Things. Uh, so we are going to see how uh, they, um, the different standardizing um, entities uh, managed it. And then we are going to see the real time applications. And then we are going to go more in deeply into uh, the security protocols of the Internet of Things. Let me just give you a brief introduction of the different uh, types of devices. You may know that the Internet of Things has been designed for very small devices in terms of capacity, memory, and also processing. That is, the energy they need to use. So, uh, we see that there are three classes of devices. The very, very, very small, much less than 10 kilowatts and 100 uh, uh, in uh, flash memory. And then uh, class one are a bit larger, 100 kilowatts uh, of uh, uh, flash uh, and 10 of RAM. And then you have the class two. The technologies that we are going to see now are going to focus uh, specifically in class one devices. So in particular, what we're going to see here is the evolution in IETF but I'm going to focus more on the security protocols, as I said initially. In 2005, they started talking about some protocols, including six low PAMs, that uh, aims to compress the IPVC uh, headers to run these protocols in uh, where the technology is restricted. So this, um, uh, they focus a lot in uh, compressing the IPv6 uh, header then for WPAN networks and 6 though that was uh, the came later started working more with other link uh, layers such as Bluetooth of low energy and then some groups started talking about uh, the application of the Internet of Things such as the co-op group they started seeing some objects that could be a bit better, similar to JSON, but I call Seaboard, that are essential for these uh, environments and sensors that are restricted. And also some issues of transport, UDP. The, for these sensors, uh, it, as these sensors exchange packets with bits, very little information, they saw that it wasn't so necessary to use TCP for transport, but with UDP it could be solved. But we also needed some mechanisms at the application level, such as RESCOM, such as the co-op protocol, that are also good for these restricted environments. And it's sort of minimizing the HTTP protocol that we use in the regular apps, but with some exceptions. Then they started talking, uh, they started working more on security. So far, we have discussed uh, issues related to the apps. But starting in 2014, they started focusing more on the security protocols. And now there are very, very interesting things that appeared. And what we can see here in the presentation, there were many working groups that appeared in the last four or five years, where basically what is we do is to attack the last mile of the security of the Internet of Things. So we have different protocols, including the flash execution uh, added in protocol, that they, they realized that there was a big problem with the update of the firmware in the IoT devices. What happens when the devices are not updated and there's a security problem? In a way, they saw that it was important to communicate with a, with a vendor. 
directly. And some update aspects uh, of uh, these uh, uh, devices, but uh, they still needed the um, authentication. And these uh, environments, these uh, devices that work in uh, restricted values, when they are booting, they cannot communicate, they can only update. So these are some of the things that were seen as the last mile of security. Then there were uh, good practices, such as the lightweight authenticated key exchange, the Lake Working Group was uh, involved in the good practices for cryptographic keys that were strong enough, but at the same time that would balance uh, the um, power consumption. So with, uh, following the previous work of ASE and other groups, they managed uh, a number of recommendations for different layers, the network layers that we typically know in the different layers there is there are improvements to security and the suite that is the software update of the internet of things we have many families of protocols that started to appear that are interesting so summarizing the security layers and how we added them here in the chart you can see the class the comparison between the in classical internet and the internet of things the classical both of them secured uh, you see that if we want security in the app we use https and the, in the internet of things this is done with the co-op protocols that i mentioned earlier they are ideal for iot but adding the layer of loss uh, of course although the working group course that um, developed these objects that are like a json but simplified and adequate to transmit information in bits that's the information of the internet of things sensors that measure temperature they don't have much information so these protocols that in the application layer provides security have been well thought so that the size of the payload is minimal. On the other hand, the transport layer and the DC group worked on this DTLS protocol, which seeks to carry out the transport layer security, which provides a greater level of security to the lower layers, where it is probably more difficult to take security to. So the DTLS that runs there is what is being sought. Then I also mentioned that UDP is the replacement of TCP for Internet of Things because of the amount of information that is transmitted. So basically with DTLS, that is what is used. And finally, go to the network layer. I was telling you about the IPv6 and the 6 low and how they managed to encapsulate this in IPv6 packet containing all the information. Now they also use the headers of the IPv6 to provide additional security in the network layer. With that aim, uh, work was done over many years, the LLG, which ended with recommendations like SP and the IQV2, which is analog to IPsec for the network layers security of the Internet of Things. Now, to summarize the latest IETF 111 back in July, basically, there was a state of the art work, and some of the conclusions are that there are some things that have, are becoming standardized, those environments, the remote testing can be done, these are restricted environments. So there are many developments that are being carried out, but there's a mile that is still many remaining, like bootstrapping and how to really update non-updated devices. So there are a couple of scenarios with a view to the industry as well, because with the advent of the Internet of Things, this is quite clear globally. This still is not in line with the security protocols, these additions to the security. So there's a strong fear in the industry that all these applications that are affecting us every day and will really really be playing with our data a controller data center that could be failure so it's very important for this work to continue and that 
this goes to the industry and that the industry provides feedback on this. And this is something that is uh, everyone is speaking about blockchain and cryptocurrencies. IEEE has a work called IOTA, which is the blockchain for the Internet of Things. This seeks to achieve these transactions with the Internet of Things. Where do the sensors write problems of communications between the gateways? Now, the open networks is something that is in fashion now. So this goes to the gateway and then between the gateway administration is difficult. So with blockchain technologies, this could be an interesting option to store information transmitted by the sensors, by the pros. For that, we need security mechanisms and also for the non-restricted ones. So basically here, the sensors, the probes will communicate with the gateway and with the router, listening to the communications in these IoT protocols, and then that node, that router will have full IP connectivity, it will have connectivity, full connectivity to the internet, and will have no restrictions like these probes do. So there, they will provide these packets received by the probes, they will pro provide the payload as well as other higher layer uh, authentications and they will be then submitting these keys or encrypted things to the blockchain to have information and to save the information. So that's the paradigm of IOTA which is based on a technology called Tangle. I'm almost finished. I have only uh, my time's up, but in April this year, an open group was created in the Internet Society chapters, where this was now expanded a bit more. And this is the group on IoT and cybersecurity for Latin America and the Caribbean. The mission seeks to take this protocol standardization and best practices not only to the technical field, but also to the legal field, the social field, and how to drive these open networks of these open protocols that we now have, that have a very wide, a very wide reaching that could provide interconnection and also improve the economy, industry and agriculture in the different countries. I will stop here. So I'm happy to take any questions and thank you very much for your time. It is a pleasure for me to be here in the in-person, rather hybrid modality of this LACNOG, LACNIC event. Thank you, Nicolas. For us, it is a pleasure to have you here. Jaime will tell us if there are any questions in the Q&A. We encourage you to write your questions, whether in the Q&A or here in the conference. Jaime. We have a question from Laura. She would like to know how, what is the position of the Freni industry to protocols such as IOTA? Well, I'm not familiar with Freni, but we have to see what this is like because the industry follows a path and the protocols follow a different path. Although many security protocols have been standardized, it doesn't mean that the industry has adopted these. There are some proprietary software and others are open source. So what is sought is to make these things and processes more transparent. Those are the work that has to do with the IoT Ops working group uh, tasks. These are individual tasks that deal with technology. And this is not only for IoT, but also for restricted nodes. So this is used for IoT. So what is sought here is that regardless of the vendors and regardless of everything, is to reach a global a general consensus to make these the technologies to be used by the IoT. So there is a lot of work done with the industry to persuade the major entrepreneurs who are launching new devices of new versions of the devices to take into account the security protocols so that the ones that are more standardized or most approved globally. Thank you, Nicolas. Jaime, do you have any more questions in the Q&A? Yes, I'd like to clarify something. Frene was wrong, wrongly written. We do have a question from Gustavo Ferreira. He's asking, how do we access information regarding the progress made by the working groups? Well, that's a good question, a very good question. In the IETF website, there is a place called Data Tracker. There you can follow the work done by all the Internet of Things 
group. It will be en uh, encompassed by the IoT ops, and there you have information for each of the layers and for each of the technologies that I have mentioned. You will there you'll find there the milestones for this year and for next year, as well as the drafts that have now become RFCs and have become standardized. So I invite you to visit the IETF website. It's ietf.org and to follow the IoT Cybersecurity Group for Latin America and the Caribbean, which will be preparing drafts or also state of the art on the latest IoT technologies. So there you can find much more information. 